wanted to start off with this quote by Neil Bennett, who's a great friend, and it's brilliant. It's called, Why Do We Sing? We sing when we're in love. We sing when we need spurring on in our battles, our endeavors, our challenges. We sing when our hearts are breaking. We sing at the birth of our children, at the marriage of our families, at the funerals of our loved ones. Songs help us celebrate our successes, express our intentions, grieve our losses. They give nations their identities and accompany their achievements. Songs unite generations and peoples. They evoke memories of times gone by, of significant and wonderful events in our histories. They inspire us to dream and to travel the journey of life. There is also power in the language of song. Songs and the melodies and harmonies and rhythms that, they, that accompany them can evoke powerful and intense emotional, emotional reactions. The world knows this. A particular song can inspire someone to do great acts of mercy, but can also compel someone to do dreadful acts of depravity. A particular song can carry someone through great times of testing, but can also cause someone to give up. A particular song can capture our hearts to serve the broken people around us, but can also lure us to spend huge amounts of money that we don't have on things that we don't need. Oh yes, we're talking about singing. We are not talking about something that wanders around the fringe of our society, on the edges of people's lives. Singing is at the heart of this world and all that the world does. I love that little section. It's amazing. Isn't it? Some people always say, you know, Yes, worship is about so much more than singing songs. It's about, you know, how we give. It's about our reactions. It's about the, in, the, the, the hidden things. It's about everything else. But why singing? Why has the Lord chosen singing to be uh, the corporate expression and something in the private as well? What is it? What do you think? Why is it? Other than the things we just said. It comes out of your heart. Why else? We, we can all do it, whether we can sing in tune or not. And then some, obviously some people can't sing and some people, you know, literally, physically can't make the moves. There's, there's moments when I'm, I put myself sometimes on voice rest. If I've got a busy kind of time of I've just had a cold and I've got loads of gigs and sessions and leading worship. Sometimes if my voice is tired, first thing I'll do is go to physio, voice physio most painful thing you'll ever experience, maybe behind giving birth. <laughs> voice physio, but I'll often put myself on voice rest because there's nothing better than just stopping to speaking <laughs> for two days. But sometimes I'll go to church and I'll join in and worship and mouth along because there's something about engaging our bodies, our spirits and our voices to worship God. But that's, there's something about it across every culture Every tribe has got something to do with singing. We connect, whether it's choral, gospel, just melodic, we all do it. And there's something about the, the will of joining words with melody that we're making from our bodies. And it's an instrument within our bodies that God's chosen. And it, we just connect, don't we? Whether you can sing in tune or not. I sometimes wish I was one of those people. Do you ever have someone in your church who's completely tone deaf, but just goes for it? Sometimes I, I envy it. I envy that sort of, I can't hear what I'm doing. It's got nothing to do with sounding beautiful. <laughs> They're just like, da -da! The, Lord, the Lord sees that. And it's just as beautiful to his ear as someone who's got a beautiful voice. But <laughs> it's really good also to work on our voices and to work and be intentional with our voices as much as an instrument would be. I find a lot of singers who just don't do any practice, don't you know, turn up just before, not warmed up, and have their voices have stayed with the same ability for 20 years. And actually, other instrumentalists will have to really work. And so there's one thing, our bodies are our instruments, but in the same respect as other instruments, we need to try and keep working on them, keep improving, and keep, um, yeah, so that we bring God our best. Yeah? We want to bring God our best. You know, if like this morning, if our timing is an issue, just listen to as much music as you can. Clap along. You know, if, if, if you're um, uh, in, in the backing vocal section of your church, make sure you can really can sing in harmony and sing different parts. You know, often we come and say, I only sing the melody below. I only sing the bit above. Let's really try and push ourselves, push our ears. 
listen to as much music as we possibly can, secular and sacred, you know, um, classical and pop. Are, you know, as much, be as musical as we possibly can be and appreciate music beyond our, our uh, kind of scope of what, we, of what we bring, of what we're used to and what we've been brought up to because it gains that musicianship that's really hard to teach in a seminar. You can't really give someone quickly musicianship that's in our ears that's in our bodies, that just can stay in time, that can just stay in tune. There's something that comes over time. You find that people who've grown up in households where music is just on all the time, when you're playing with other people, that's where, that's where, it's, where it's birthed. And let me just say from the get-go, technique with vocals should never hinder you. It should always be something that is a tool. It, it, you know, it should just give you um, permission to kind of have other gears. Do you know what I mean? And it should release you as opposed to hinder you. And a lot of time people have gone to lessons and gone to coaching and they feel that they have had to kind of shrink into a mould. And that's not the case. Every one of you has a different voice. There's no one formula for one, each one of you. And you have to listen to your bodies and know how you learn and know how you express yourself. And these techniques, take or leave them. You know, th th there's good technique that will help everyone. But you've got to listen to your bodies also. Yeah? And you all bring different stories. You all bring different experience to when you lead worship. No one should really sound the same. And that's the beautiful thing about being a singer. Is that you, it's so much more than your voice. It's your history. It's your testimony. My friend Jono, who I work with a lot, always says, if in doubt, bring your testimony. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if you don't connect with a song, just think, this is what I, you know, but bring who you are. And it, that reads more, more than singing technically brilliantly. I mean, when you mean what you sing, <laughs> that will move people more than having a beautiful voice. So in this session, we'll go through quite, you know, quite basic stuff, um, but it's really helpful to remind ourselves. So some of you may be incredibly experienced singers, maybe more so than I, and some of you may be complete beginners who've never had any sort of lesson or training before. Hopefully this will kind of gather us all in. So what we're going to do is just stand up. Okay, the most important thing with singing is, um, is breathing. And it's not about um, actually uh, more air is better. Actually, most of the time, it's less air is better. Uh, we often take way too much air in when we sing uh, and overcompensate. And we breathe in a way that we wouldn't normally breathe when we talk. And actually, we want to... It, singing is natural. We shouldn't actually load on much when we sing. Um, so can you all just go... Put your hands underneath your ribs here, your, your thumbs in, that's it. You can just go, ft, ft, ft. Did you feel your body go, here? Ft, ft, ft. Good, that's your diaphragm really working. So just to, to clarify, the diaphragm is the muscle below your, below your lungs, and it's the thing that controls how it... Um, uh, when you inhale, when you exhale, and it's the control. It's, it's not necessarily about power; it's about control. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to exhaust our exhale. A um, lot of the time, people freak out at, when they're at the end of their breath, and that's more of a mental thing actually than a physical thing. When we're at the end of our breath, we're at the most supported because our muscles are mostly engaged. And what you don't want to do, I find there's two camps. There's people who tense up when they get to the end of, our, end, end of their breath, and there's those that kind of deflate. Do you know what I mean? Like, or they go, do you know what I mean? And you want to be neither. So you don't want to be like a balloon that withers, okay? What you want to do, I often think of a picture of, of um, like an egg timer. So as the, as the sand goes down the egg timer, it, it fills up the bottom, it gets more secure. And then when you flip it over, it just starts again. So it's the same with breathing. So let's all just go, shh, and we want to really push. Okay, so try not to, if you're someone who tenses up, try not to, at the end of your breath, bring your shoulders up. It's all just here. What you'll feel is your diaphragm lifting, and you'll feel it all coming in. So you should feel tension here, but try not to bring any of it up to your shoulder and your neck. So let's just do that You'll find out whether you're a <laughs> deflated balloon or a wound up like a bobbin. Okay, ready? So just go first. Feel your diaphragm. 
Good. Now go, shh. Now shove the air out quite violently. Shh. Good. When you get to the end, try and push a bit more. Shh, 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 shh. Good. Now just feel that tension. Now let it go. Good. So actually breathing in, what we want, the reason for doing this, breathing in is the most natural reflex we have. Maybe apart from blinking, but the same. <laughs> we all blink and swallow and breathe in. Um, so yeah, so just what we want it to do is just be a muscular thing. So what we want to avoid is the sound of shh. <gasps> because actually that's helping no one. Your shoulders go up. That If you can hear your breath, there's restriction. You should hardly hear it. If you're going, <gasps> all you're hearing is air desperately trying to get through your clamped vocal cords or your clamped, there's muscles that, were, that, ha, that come across. It's, called, it's actually called the false folds. So it's like a replica of your, your vocal cords that closes over to stop dust getting through. So that's when you swallow. Just swallow for me. That closing together is those false folds. Okay, so when you're breathing in and too much air is coming in and it's all just going here and not even coming into your lungs properly, it's just going through your mouth, that, <gasps> just breathe like that for a minute, it's horrible, it's like Darth Vader. <gasps> you're actually hardly taking in any air and all you're hearing is breath trying to get through. So at the end of that exhausted breath, you just let go of those muscles, don't try, it's natural reflex, okay, and just let go and you take in just the right amount of air, not too little, not too, uh, not too much. It's too much air in there is awful. You feel like you're always like, <gasps> better is one day your cause. <laughs> better is one day no. And you have to like let go of air before you breathe in again. Nightmare. Okay, so let's do it again. Shh. Really let, get rid of the air. And you'll feel your small of your back kicking in at the end as well. But don't be afraid of the end of your breath. You're not going to die. Shh. Calm, calm, calm. Muscle, muscle, muscle. Like you're doing sit-ups. Shh. Now let go. It's a lovely amount of air, isn't it? Not too much. It doesn't hurt. It's really important. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go on a tss, and you'll find that um, you'll go a lot longer with the tss because there's less air coming out. And it's about the same amount of, um, of air released as when you're singing. So that tss sound. Try not to shake at the end of your breath. Keep still. Tss. Good. Right, this part of our body, as we know, anyone who does any sort of exercise, this is designed for tension, okay? This is where everything goes. And just if you feel the rest of your body, anything that's tensing, like your knees, your feet, your shoulders here, that's when you start getting vocal damage, is when all these muscles are compensating and they're tensing up. And with a tense voice, that's when you get restriction. So at the beginning of a warm-up, so... I would want to teach you in this section how to warm up before a time of worship. Okay, so this isn't the advanced vocal. That'll be, that'll be really growing your voice. This is, I think, five-minute warm-up is plenty. Honestly, it's not about long things. Because often, I mean, in my church, we do three services in a row. So, and that's all day. <laughs> and sound, with sound check, rehearsal time of worship, ministry time that could go on forever, and then start again. So what you don't want to load on top of that is a 40-minute warm-up, and you're talking. <laughs> Just means so vocalists, we, we need to grow, but we need to listen to our voices as well. Five-minute warm-up, but we'll take, it'll take a long time because well, I'll explain what it's doing. So I'd start with that, just going, shh, get on, getting your breath, breathing on a reflex again and feeling that power in your diaphragm and engaging it, all that sort of thing. Then I would partner... That with something vocal. And some of these warm-ups push lots of buttons at one go. Okay, so what I do, uh, so those of you who have seen me before, we, we will be, I will be repeating this, but it's good to, good to refresh it. Okay, so I often do the motorbike. Okay, so it's like this. It's like a V sound. A lot of these sounds, you will be engaging your diaphragm without even trying. Just to make that sound, your body will do that. So the, and everything you don't have to think too much is good. <laughs> to do that. So what you're doing, what you're feeling there is your diaphragm, it goes all the way through your vocal cords and straight to the front of your face. Okay, so it warms up what we call the mask area. 
which is really important. It moves your lip. The note is breaking. If you feel it, the note is breaking on your lip and not the back of your throat. Can you feel that? Can you feel your tummy's working? Now, what we want to do is go from as low as you can. So it'll be different for different people, different for men as women, from the bottom of your range all the way to the top. It, I feel like it helps when you physicalize it. For me, it does, because you know where you are. So if all the way in the bottom to the top, for me, it'll be... Ready? Now, if you feel... Try and keep the... Keep it there. Some of you going... V, v. Try and keep it on a. V. If you feel it breaking, going v, 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 in your body, that means you're pushing air too much, and the note is breaking in your throat. We want it to be breaking on our lip. Okay, so keep it, keep it forward. It's hard because I can't hear individuals, so you'll have to just like listen to your body. V, if it's going, v, can you feel that? That's air punching through, and it's not so healthy. Let's try again. V, v, Try and push it up. So you'll feel the vibrations for high notes and low notes are different. Did you feel that? The high notes, they go where? Where's the vibration? It's on your lip, but it'll also, it should go into your, this area here. It's really twangy. Because actually, a lot of singing, it's more about resonance in your body than it is just like brute force. It's using the different parts of our bodies to bring that tone rather than just, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? To be spreading out. So I think of it as, you know, different areas of an instrument that you'll hear. It's the same with our bodies. The lower notes, you'll feel it on your chest a bit more. It's just notes are made. If you think about vocal cords, it's a pathway of air that comes through your vocal cords and they do this. Oh. I kind of want to show you a clip. I might do it in the second section of like vocal cords working. It's fascinating. But it comes through and it makes a vibration and then it comes out of our mouths. But that vibration carries on and makes the tone. So fascinating what the law's done and how it's, made, how it's made the body to work. It's incredible. But so higher notes, we use, and with head voice, I don't like to separate the voice too much because otherwise you sound like you've got three different personalities. <laughs> um, but it's one voice but different approaches, right? There's so many different choices we can do as a singer. We've got loads of tools at our disposal. But with the high notes, use all this. Can you can feel that. It's like twangy. So do that. Guys, you can try and go into your falsetto a little bit. But to make the falsetto, men, make the falsetto stronger and less airy, it's using all of this. All of this will help. Um, men and women, male and female voices are very different instruments, gloriously. They serve different purposes, but they're quite different. Um, and then the lower notes just go, oh, hmm, 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 hmm. Feel it on your chest. Hmm, hmm. I often say, think of different accents. So I, I grew up in Surrey. Hello, I'm from Surrey. Or oh, Buckinghamshire. Box. Hmm. Do you see that? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hello, I'm from Surrey. Hello, hmm, 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 hmm. And then go, oh, hi, I'm from Essex. <laughs> go on. Oh, 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 mamma mia, Rima. Can you feel it all here? Yeah? So good tone is mixing any of that. So let's just go one more time. Feel it down there. You can, you'll feel the tone moving. And you can put some of that top in. It's like self-EQ. It's like the sound engineers will EQ your voice, bring a bit of treble in, a bit of bass in. You can bring some treble, treble down the bottom, but it's good to just wake them up in the morning. So that's like 10 seconds of our warm-up. <laughs> Honestly, that will wake your voice up. Um, oft, if you have time to warm up and if you're not going to drive your family or your neighbours crazy, warm, doing all these things in the shower is really good because you get loads of steam. And steam is the only thing that gets to your vocal cords. Water is great when you drink it, but it's systemic hydration water. It won't go straight here. You want to keep your whole body hydrated all the time, but steam is localised hydration. So it'll go straight to your vocal cords, because obviously it's in the different... You don't, when you swallow, it doesn't go to your vocal cords. It's a different tube. <laughs> so steam, if you can do that, good steam. I've got a beautiful steamer. Um, if you've got a sore throat, it's often just your vocal cords are uh, swollen. Steam will bring it right down. Lovely. Um, okay, so another next one. Now, some people, 
I don't get it. You know how some people can't roll their tongues and do different things? Some people just can't do this one. It's called a lip buzz, and it's basically a lip roll. The secret of this one is keeping it compact. Try not to go like a horse. It's... This microphone's going to be covered in spit. Gross. Singing exercises are always daft. We just need to get over it. Right, same sort of thing, low to high. I'll talk about this later. To extend, this exercise is the best to extend your range. Okay, it's the best because it's um, compact, so you don't get this kind of straining that you do. So let's actually just have an exercise of that. We'll go probably do this again later. Um, do that. If you've got time to do this in the mornings, great. Good. Doesn't matter if you can't. None of you are craning your neck. Can you feel how it's so good? One more. One more. Now, that note, hardly any of you would probably sing that in real life. It's a super D. Ah! If you were to sing that out loud, a lot of you probably wouldn't know you were capable of singing that note. Ah! It's like a Mariah Carey note. Do you know what I mean? Extend your range, especially with head voice. So that's a really good exercise to do. But in the kind of quick warm-up, just go... Even chromatic... That sort of thing. Really good. Again, it makes you support. You can't make that noise unless, unless you support. Just to maintain that air coming through your lips it requires you to do it without thinking. Great. Good one? Great. So, uh, and then open it up into sirens. So it's the same sort of thing, but with on an open vowel. So, what, but don't do that straight away. So any siren, woo! Just do that. Good, and then listen to your bodies. If the, you're pushing, and there's a crap, like that sort of hiccup, you're pushing too much air. You're probably taking in too much of an inhale that's not a reflex. Like you go, do you mean? Just listen to your body. You don't need loads of air to sing. As much as you need to talk. It's controversial. Some people disagree with me with that. But you don't. You don't. Honestly, just do that again. Woo! Good, and then I take it down. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to extend our vocals down. You can do whatever you want. You don't need a piano. But for now, we're going to go. I often use vowel shapes of E and R. Okay, E and R are really like opposite vowels. E uses that twang. E, can you hear that? E, it's a closed vowel. Your tongue goes right to the roof of your mouth and you do a smile. And you naturally use that twang so it warms it up. R. It's a dropped jaw. Do you feel that? Ah, oh. and that sound it hollows out at the back of your throat. Yeah, ah. Oh. So what you want? Sometimes you want to exaggerate those vowels. Sometimes you want to make them as similar as possible. So what we'll do right now, we will um, exaggerate them. So we're going to go. E I E I E I E I E. Sing that. E. Don't you don't need to be too loud. Right, now are you all supporting? So when you breathe in, you let go. And when you're on, you should feel that pht feeling. Pht. If in doubt, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm supporting, go pht. Oh, now I am. And you can hold it. E -I -E -I -E -I -E now you don't need to, just while I remember, and um, Andrew, who will do, who's my physio, will say, a lot of problems, some people over-support, and they'll over-push those muscles down there. You don't want to do that. You just need to be, that's, that sense of, is enough support. You should be feeling it, but not to the point where you hurt your muscles. And you, you can pull your, your, I can't, it's like transverse abdominus or something. 
technical that I don't know. <laughs> um, you don't over push it when you support, but you just feel it. Let it go. <laughs> I mean, you have to, again, listen to your vocals. Some people are always more heavy on the R and need to work on the E. Some people, it's too loads of E. A lot of my musical theatre students are really twangy. E, I, So I'm like, soften up that E, warm up that R. E, I, E, I, E, I. Yeah, lovely. Keep going. E, I, E, I, E, I, E, I. Those of you who are... Um, sopranos mind it, find it when you go lower, you disappear. I'm the same. I have to try and put a little bit of twang in the lower notes, otherwise it won't come out. I'll be ee Where I disappear. Some people, you know, it depends on the face over here. All about that face. Yeah, um, so know where you're going to sing. Try and just reach a few notes over where you're going to sing. Don't just have the top note that you're going to sing in, your, in, in the worship note be the, all that you warm up to. Because when you really push your voice high, it will bring tone and texture down. Okay, so in that, in the warm up, if you haven't got a piano, just maybe do some sirens on different vowels. So E, E, yeah! Just do that. Yeah. Again, I always gesticulate everything. Using your hand helps. Yeah. Now do it on an I, uh, 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 an E, uh, an R. Sorry. Ah. Ah. And again, listen to your bodies. Think. Hear, hear what you're struggling with. Um, ooh. 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 So. So as we said, E's are really like, it's like a horizontal vowel. R is like a vertical vowel. And OO comes out, which is like a 3D one. OO, with OO to make it warm. Because can you hear it? It's quite compact. OO. If you don't pout, OO, it's just like non-sound. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't project. So to project an OO, we need to really pout. OO. Uh, OO over here. OO. Do you see that? OO. Don't be apologetic of using your face. Most singers, most good singers, if you watch a cl clip of them, they never look that good. <laughs> to me, it's always like mm -mm, ugly faces. Look at Aretha Franklin. Look at, you know, Jesse J, you know, James Brown, all those people. Their faces are really expressive because we use everything with our lips and our face. We use, it's all part of our instrument. And um, just need to get over the fact that sometimes we might look, you know, I remember someone praying against my frown once because I was frown. I was like, hang on. <laughs> I'm just expressing myself. I'm on a piano. There's nothing to do but my face. <laughs> you know? So um, let's warm up those vowels a bit more. And we want to also project, use your, the consonances because they release the sound out of your mouth. Yeah? So we're going to use um, uh, V, 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 V. It's a V. I like a V sound. It's good. V. V, so we're going to go V, 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 Va, 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 V. So we go V, so that V, really exaggerate it, V. Yeah, and yet let that consonant pop, okay? V, 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 Va, 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 V, and that U, I really want you to really pout it, okay? V, 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 Va, 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 V. Let's take it down a bit. V, 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 Va, 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 V. V, 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 Va, 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 V. Good. V, 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 Va, Va, V, good. Now, if you're getting up high, don't be afraid to kind of mix it and go up high. You don't need to bring it into, uh, you know. V, 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 good. Good. Now, let that con let the V, the consonant, whatever consonant, you could go B, 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 G, 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 me, me, me. Any of those will work. I like a V. But, um, uh, yeah, let the consonant do all the work. Shouldn't sing, shouldn't be too laboured. Do you know what I mean? It should just come out. Sometimes if it's too laboured, be, 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 ba, 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 boo. Do you know what I mean? That it doesn't spin. Don't, often it's like a, here comes another picture, sorry. I often think of, you know those, um, those things you have as a child with a tennis ball on a string? What's it called? What, swing ball, that's it. 
and you, you hit it, and it comes round, and you hit it again. It's like that with singing. The notes need to spin. So you hit it, and let them come out. You don't hold the ball around the thing, do you? <laughs> v, 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 va, 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 vu. Try that. Good. And it's the same with, we'll go on to this later, with phrasing. You don't have to, like, every single note. V, 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 va, 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 vu. It becomes more musical. Can you hear that? Try that. Um, v, 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 va, 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 vu. Good. V, 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 va, 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 vu. Good. V, 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 va, 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 vu. Good. V, 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 va, 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 vu. Now, don't be afraid to be in your head voice, ladies. <laughs> and the more exaggerated you are with those sounds in head voice or falsetto, the more exaggerated you are, the more it will come out. And it might be breathy. And sometimes we feel like we're going. It's the same. Try and just release it. Use those, again, use those consonants. Just go. Strong head voice. It's all about tone with head voice, not brute force. Singing shouldn't really be about brute force, okay? So in a quick warm-up, you can do that without an instrument, can't you? But even if, even if you just do and a bit of and yee, that'll wake your voice up. Great. Take a seat. Um, but um, so what we're going to do now, just really practical things, and do ask questions. Actually, at this point, is there any questions? Because often we have them at the end, and then we don't have time to hear people. Yeah? Brrr. Do you know what will help? Brrr. Here you go. You hold it. Brrr. So you want to keep it compact. Just, but really, okay, go like this. Shh. Shh. It needs to be the same pressure as you feel there. Brrr. Brrr. So do it really short. Brrr. It's something that, so I honestly think it's a genetic thing sometimes. That's fine. If, if you won't roll, can you do a tongue roll? It's not as effective because it doesn't use this, but then the, the uh, will. It warms up, it loosens up your tongue, actually. I prefer the lip roll or a lip buzz, as we call it, because it's less of a You don't want to be like a horse. Like a cricket. <laughs> Think cricket rather than horse. Um, but yeah, that's a good one. Did you have a question? Um, I'm not a massive believer in cutting out food groups or not eat. I think we need to be able to maintain being able to sing with normal life. Yeah, so just, yeah, maybe just have a light bit for your heavy singing, but then if you're singing all day, you need to nourish <laughs> yourself. So, um, is ty yeah, try not to have something too heavy. Yeah. Which is meant to, you know, try and gain, gain the strength in that. But, you know, if I'm ill, you know, if I'm feeling weak, I will maybe will ease up on dairy before I sing, but I wouldn't cut it out completely unless you have an, you know, intolerance, allergy. You know, do what you need to do. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so when you completely cut things out, it's not, I don't think it's, you need to be able to maintain normal life. Um, and you need to have a voice which is strong over any kind of season. But, again, yeah, may, you might be over-supporting. Do you know what I mean? You should be able to sing without kind of massive muscle tension. Um, Yeah, definitely. So ha drink loads of water, open it up, and do as much warm-up as you can after that. You know, so to have a good old... <laughs> and you'll gain that strength. If you go sh cold, straight from eating, to that, swig a load of water. Try not to drink... Fizzy. The only thing I stay away from when I sing massively is... Um, it sounds gross. Sorry, video. <laughs> it's fizzy drinks. Because it makes you a bit gassy. And that's a horrible feeling when you want to burp. So, so unglamorous, sorry. Um, yeah, fizzy drinks are the worst because you lose that, that um, support <laughs> when you're a bit gassy. <laughs> so it's great. But yeah, fizzy drinks aren't the best. <laughs> and really milky drinks aren't the best because it just, uh, dairy, um, excess dairy will cause lots of phlegm. Sorry, it's gross. Uh, yeah, and that makes it hard for your vocal cords to join together properly because they're all sticky. So, but the thing is, I just think, good old drink of water, a bit of a gargle, Bob's your uncle. 
Uh, any other questions at this point? Oh, millions. Uh, yeah, you go first. Mm. There is a thing. I mean, when we uh, when we get older, our physicality changes, um, and just it's just listening to your body. And sometimes, just um, if we've a lot of the time we've sung out of brute force. And again, it's getting the tones to do the work for you. Like I said, you know, really listening, trying to get that um, the twang. Uh, what we'll do later is we'll talk about belting, so singing loudly, safely. Um, so we'll go into a bit more technical things. But yeah, again, listen to your body. We change. Our voices age. Um, uh, but what we, you know, you don't have to age loads if you take care of it. If you, you know, a lot of you know rock singers will lose their voice because they just, you know, just sing and uh, uh, too many, you know, singing right next to loud speakers and you know with monitors you can't hear yourself that sort of thing. That I think things will get better generally in music as more people go in ear monitors because then the singers can just hear yourselves crystal clear and you don't have to compensate in front of the drums. Do you know what I mean all those different things? A lot of time when people push their bodies. They don't hear it. They don't feel it because of adrenaline. They don't feel that they're... Um, it's slightly different in church, but I find a lot of singers lose their voice, professional singers lose their voice because they just give them too much. And often I, I find that I push my voice more in worship than I do it in my secular singing because we just go for it, do you know what I mean? And you just pour your heart out on the stage and sometimes just technique goes to goes to pot a little bit, but what you want to do is have technique be so ingrained in you off the platform, off of the kind of time when you're in pressure, that you just do it. It's muscle memory. You just, you don't think, I'm going to support here and lower back and lower abdominals or belts with lats. You don't want to, you don't want to think about that too much. It's okay to think about it. <coughs> it's okay to be deliberate with your voice. I want to just say that and let that settle. Because a lot of people really hold back in church because of fear of performing. I don't know feel that. You desperately, you don't, just don't perform. There's an element of performance. As long as your ego's out the window, and it's not, look at me, it's, look at Jesus. But if we're so held back, we don't, we, we, we're not only not saying, don't look at me, we're not saying, don't look at Jesus. You know, we need to be like, I believe this, are you with me? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And if we s use our bodies and outpour ourselves and, you know, be, be, have as many gears as possible to do that, the more that we'll, people will be like, oh, gosh, he is like that. <laughs> yes, I want to raise my voice more. And it's not about performance. As long as our ego is not there, as long as we don't seek and need approval and we need people to say, your voice is amazing. It's the best voice I've ever heard. I feel really sorry for young people today who are growing up in an approval-craved society with Facebook, Instagram, all these different things where it's all about likes and views and different things. And the, the need for approval is toxic. And as long as we don't need that compliment, we're just saying, Jesus, I'm going to outpour myself. You, use my voice. I'm going to be deliberate. I'm going to sing it like this here because I'm declaring. I'm going to sing it like this because it's intimate. I'm going to sing it like this because it's showing something of the beauty of your character. If we want to be, de be deliberate as you can and don't feel brute force, don't need to shout. You don't need to shout. You don't need to use the microphone. The microphone can be loud. And you don't need to be necessarily any other questions? We had quite a few. Yep. <coughs> How do you find it? Okay. The best way to find it is go, everyone, just <laughs> if some, pretend that someone's being a bit fancy and just go, ooh. Everyone do that. Ooh. 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 That's your head voice. Ooh. <laughs> Or um, take on a little, um, what happens is it's different because it's not the same as how we speak. Some people do actually speak in their heart voice all the time. My, Vic, my uh, Pippa Gumbel, who's Vicar's wife at my church, she always speaks in her head voice. Pips, <laughs> everything's up here. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Some, most people speak in this sort of neutral place, neutral larynx. Head voice is when it's slightly tilted forward. Can you feel that? Ooh, everyone do that. Ooh. We'll do this a bit more in the second section because section, we're going to talk about all the differences in our voice and how we bring them to expression. But if you're if in doubt, or like that, um, you know, have you ever heard a puppy dog when it's like, feed me or take me for a walk? Mm, mm. That thing. Mm. Do it on a closed mouth. Mm. 
It's more about tone, and you'll feel that vibration, and it's all pointing towards our head. When we speak, it's neutral, okay? Sometimes we dig in down here for chest voice. Hey, do that. Hey, it's here. It's speech. Sometimes we want to bring that speech, but head voice. Classical singers will sing in their head voice the whole way. There'll be, ooh, everyone sing that note, ooh. So it's like pointing forward. Ooh, they'll go, ooh. It's all forward, okay? Contemporary singing often is in speech. La, 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 la. There's a roof to it. You can't go up that high because it stays in neutral. Okay, I wish I had a drawing because our trachea kind of goes backwards. Okay. You either need to go down. Oh, it's too complicated to go into in this in this point. <laughs> I need diagrams. But yeah, so woo, and then grow it, and it can become louder through resonance, through those tones that we were talking about. Woo, 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 do that. All those warm ups. You can go incredibly high like that. You just have to find the head voice and strengthen it, and strengthen the lower head voice as well, because that's harder. Uh, or make sure that you, if you understand that don't, you don't you, you don't come away feeling like you hold it. You have to hold it. I, I mean, that's just practice thing and try and, you know, try and, you don't need to have the, when you're taking an air, air just come, off, come off the mic. It's one of those things that just need to, maybe like go for a run and try and sing at the same time. Beyonce, her dad, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd have loved to have grown up in that household, but she, her dad used to make her go on like 5K runs and sing at the same time to make her be able to maintain that physicality and that, that energy when you're singing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you can't just learn overnight. It's support um, and not taking in too much air, controlling it. You know, have you ever been for a run and if you don't know how to breathe properly, you go, <laughs> you know, you need to like, when you breathe, Do you know what I mean? So you don't breathe, you don't breathe with your, how your body's moving. You breathe in a slow way and you maintain that support. But, you know, I'm not saying everyone needs to go and become a runner to sing. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Some of the best singers are very unfit. It's true. Um, half of them sit down. Have you ever seen Etta James, Aretha Franklin, as they get older, they're all like, <laughs> just sat down. <laughs> Still same power. Do you know what I mean? Shouldn't necessarily, being fit is really good. It doesn't always translate. It can't but help. Uh, I want to just quickly, before we go to the end, just tap on things like posture, maybe fatigue with the voice, that sort of thing. A really quick way of... Everyone just stand up for a second. Sorry, I won't make you stand up the whole time. Uh, with posture and my techniques, so go through some of these, just these basic things, okay? It's and it will just help you. Um, often times, who plays a guitar here? And when they lead worship, often guitarists have horrific posture when they're singing as well. Because no one, you know, you're often self-taught. Some people are, you know, brilliantly taught. Um, but often you'll find this sort of thing going on, moving around. Do you know what I mean? What you want to do is maintain good posture. And often, often you know, you pains up the kind of shoulder blade and that sort of thing. But any, any singer, if you're singing at the same time, you, you want to just maintain a long neck, back of your neck. Just do bad posture for a minute. Just do this. So relax your shoulders, push that. Can you feel, actually, it's really uncomfortable. But we all go to that place. And can you feel that your neck, this, the front of your neck feels longer than the back, and this is all stunted? Okay, what you want to, and that's dangerous because all that, you can stand up straight, all that does is low tension onto your vocal cords, and they just, and over time, that's what causes problems, is tension and restriction. They're so restricted. So what you want to do is, even if you're not in front of a mirror, make sure that's reversed so the back of your neck feels longer. Can you feel that? And that feels shorter. Then do band posture again. Suddenly, that's longer and it feels uncomfortable. So maintain that neck. Even if you want to look up, you can do it. You kind of bring back, look up. The West End people always say, sing, yeah, sing, to, the, sing to the top circle, yeah? So you're still... And they always say, lights on your chest and sing to the top circle. Do you know what I mean? So it's always good. If you're like this, that's no good. Posture. And try not to lock your knees. I'm the worst for this. I get told of all the time. All these things that I'm teaching you, by the way, I'm continuously having to bring myself up, up, up on it. It's something that we all do. We all have habits, and we don't all see ourselves. Do you know what I mean? So things are seeing people that they won't see, and vice versa. I'm forever telling people, because I play the piano, I get that Stevie Wonderhead thing going on. It's just the worst. 
Okay. Uh, so yeah, good. To, try not to lock your knees because it makes you do that, and it's just not good for your knees. But also, it makes your kind of bottom stick out, and you get too much tension on your lower back. So slightly, can you see how if you slightly bend your knees, it makes you hold your tummy in. It's easier to do it. rather than that. It's kind of top abs work, but the bottom abs don't. Slightly bent knees, good. And shoulders, make sure they're really just relaxed. Okay, sometimes you pull them down too much and it brings more tension. Pull them up here, it goes right into your neck. Do that. Good. And can you feel it just goes straight to your neck? Too much down? Too much, yeah? Actually, it's good to have a good old shake when you warm up. I forgot to do physical warm ups. Okay, come on, Billy. So, right around, creak, creak, creak. Oh. Actually, pull your, pull your shoulders right up like this. Have a good old squeeze. And then relax. Oh, that's good, wasn't it? Again. Good. And down. Good. Also, warm-ups. Often, um, our tongue can be incredibly... Um, is, is the massive muscle. And it sits right on top of the voice box. So sometimes... But you know you have those days when you just think, oh, it's just hard to sing today. Oh, I don't feel like... It's all kind of just all a bit tense. There's things we can do, like voice physio stuff that we can do on our own. Just, I know it's Grace, and I, have to, I will cover up my face. Stick your tongue out as far as it can go. It's like, it feels like a hamstring stretch. Such a big muscle. So you can poke it out, back in, poke it out, back in. Do it again. Good. A lot of the time, your tongue will, when you're relaxed, you're trying to lift up and down, your tongue will weigh on top of it. And sometimes a good old stretch with your tongue will lift it up. Also, have a good old dig around your jaw. You can feel your tongue here. That All that there is all your tongue. Have a good old dig. I get terrible knots under my jaw. Like big old knots like you do on your back under your jaw. When I go to physio, he goes right in there, tears rolling down. But then it feels like you've got a new voice. Honestly, it's like getting something cleaned up. Yeah, have a good old dig. If you're feeling tired, sometimes, yeah, good warm-up. Back, good old stretch. Maybe stretch your shoulder blades. So it's actually a good point of um, support. Do that thing. Now, as you hold it, now get... Between your shoulders, the muscles between your shoulder, shoulder blades. Try and engage them. Can you feel that really good support? It's really good. Not too much, just a little bit. Great. Right, M sit down. Mic technique. Sit down, please. Sorry, I'm so bossy. Sit down. <laughs> Mic technique. Do you ever sometimes feel like you're popping all the time? You want to be friendly. and The sound engineer is your friend. Often they're the more powerful worship leaders than anybody else. <laughs> they control a lot. So make sure you know their name and they know yours. Often vocalists are often called BV1 and BV2, back in vocalist one. But let's all be friends. And if people don't know your name, make sure they know it. Hi, I'm Billy. How are you? What's your name? Be part of it. You know, sometimes we get offended if worship leaders don't care what we're doing they don't have us in their monitors it's just because sometimes it can just be too much information and they trust you sometimes they're not paying too much attention to what you're doing it means that they're trusting your arrangements trusting your vocals and if unsure ask do you want us to sing in unison all this bit or do you want us to go into thirds do you want us to you know ask ask keep open lines of communication but with the sound engineer they're your friend. Sing at the same volume in the sound check as you're going to do in the uh, time of worship. So important. If you sing in the sound check, going, I still don't understand, because you're embarrassed, and then suddenly you're lost in wonder, love, and praise. Christ alone. Suddenly, boom, it's you everywhere. Really try and sing at the same volume. Sing at the loudest you're going to sing. In that sound check, it's very important because then the sound engineer is your friend. Always try and build that friendship. But for, for mic technique purposes, different people have different opinions. For me, for a vocalist, for this sort of mic, okay, 
SM58, so the ones that are built like this, not the kind of long, thin ones that's shared, that's for multiple pickup. It'll pick those long, thin ones, you know what ones I mean? That, they're designed to pick up everything around them. Often you won't have that when there's drums anywhere near you or stage noise. Okay, it won't, it won't work um, because it, it picks up everything, which is great for some things, for choral stuff, brilliant. For a solo singer, you want a mic like this, okay, and you need to be close, really close. Like, n no, no further than an inch away. Can you hear if I go, Christ alone, corners. Can you hear the difference? Work stone, weak, may strong. Gone. Okay? So you need to do that. Sometimes it's deliberate you want to come back here if you want it to be faint. Did that this morning a bit, a couple of times, when I wanted to hear you lot. Because sometimes you want the congregation to, to go, to, to, to pick up, to pick up the baton a little bit back especially if the holy spirit's moving you want people to sing out pull back a little bit and then come back in if they're you know they're dwindling <laughs> encourage them but for leading and to be on a good full sound you need to be this far away no further maybe even like a thumb away like that okay now to stop that pop popping sound can you can you hear every breath is slightly going too far so what you want to do for me do you want to have it going towards your, uh, between your chin and your bottom lip? Okay, because in certain consonances, there's a rush of air. So, p, b. So those ones, there's a pop of air. So you want that pop of air to, to skim the top. Yeah? So when it goes there, it goes straight into that microphone. So you've got a, and it's horrible. So what you want to do is still be close. You want it pointing, but you want that pop of air just skim over the top, and you get a nice sound. Okay, sometimes when you go, if you go underneath it like this, you get all the bass and no top. Just means you, you want to just hear it, listen to it. But experiment with microphones. If you're going to sing really loudly, so we're going to later talk about some voice qualities, and we're going to talk about belting. So you know there's big parts of those songs where you just want to go, ah! and there's a belting. So um, I often use the example of when I survey the wondrous cross. So most of the time, it's, the song is quite um, reflective. You're looking at, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. It's com you're, you're looking, you're looking on. My richest gain. Head voice, stay on. Gain, I count but loss. Same sort of volume. But then when you get to that last one, it's more, you're, you're outpouring that, that last verse. First three verses are kind of like that. And then what were the words? Were the whole realm picking up a bit of nature mine. You want to come up to, you can't come too far back. That were an offering for, oh, that's a little rule quickly. Did you notice what I did there? What did I do? I didn't breathe in the middle of a word. You want to, you don't, don't do it. That's the most tempting one. That were an off ring for. Oh. Some of the biggest worship leaders in the world do that still. And I'm like, stop doing it. That's one word. <clears throat> don't do it. That were an off ring for. Breathe there if you want to too small i'm about to do a big belt note because what the words say love so amazing so divine deserves my life my soul my all it's you're saying it's the highest praise you're saying i'm outpouring myself in the light of the cross who am i like that forbid it lord who am i not to give everything because you gave everything. But you want to be able to have a gear. And this is what we're going to do in the next one. You want to have a gear to go over it, to, to be able to get that, that sense of passion across. It's not the same thing. Love so amazing. So you want to go. Love so amazing. So divine. Yeah. But if you go into the mic. Love so. You need to pull back slightly.
partly because the volume is massive there. Love so amazing, so divine. If you want to pull it right back there, I often do go massive on the amazing, so divine. That sort of, but reverence. Do you know what I mean? You want to go from that sense of awe to that sense of rever reverence. Again, being deliberate, not performing, but being deliberate. Because you're, you're trying to say beyond the lyrics, whoa, and whoa. Do you know what I mean? And you can, we can use our voices in that way. Come back to the next one, and I'll show you how to do it. But yes, for, just for a mic technique perspective, if you're going to do a big old belt, high belt note, pull it back. Did you hear how it said the same volume, but you still felt the felt the power of that note without being blasted and like perforating your eardrums and sound engineer hating you go whoa <laughs> you know so uh we've gone slightly over don't want to you don't want to go into your lunch any like last take us for questions one one question yeah not too long before i mean it depends <laughs> Practicalities, you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't have time when you're there. I often warm up when the drums are, um, the drums are sound checking, because it's loud. I'll go off somewhere, a little corridor, and just do some of that so it's not disturbing anyone. I often do it, but shower's the, shower's the best to wake your voice up, because you've got the steam. But if just before, don't, don't labor it too much. Five minutes is all you need, really. But then be, if you can get practice time in during the week where you're extending your range, but your time of just before, is not the place to train your voice. It's the place to wake it up and just get on support. The main thing is, okay, I'm on support. Okay, this is warmed up. Okay, this is warmed up. If you're going to belt that like I just did then, which I'll teach you later, you need to w wake that up. Belt needs waking up because it's, it's a different gear. It's like going into reverse. <laughs>